have another table like that. We're going to proceed with the cross examination, and then you have exhibits that you wish to publish. Is that correct? Yes, sir. I just would ask that the tables just be put so that they can walk around and look at them. Since it's not and things like that, um, they probably don't need to touch anything except for maybe pictures or papers. All right. Okay, well, we'll. I think we'll go back with the original plan that we had, which is uh, after we finish with this witness, and assuming there's no other live testimony uh, for the state rest, then we will send the jury out, we'll work out the logistics of that publication, and then we'll bring the jurors back in. I think that's the best way. Yes. Uh, there's, I know there's a lot of exhibits there, but then there are a lot of other exhibits as well, so we need to think about what the best way of doing this publication is. All right. Very good. Anything else that we need to take up outside the presence of the jury? Not for the All right, let's bring Gentlemen, uh, Mr. Meyer, cross examination for this witness. Yeah, thank you, Your Honor. 
Good afternoon, Investigator Bond. Good afternoon. Um, just wanted to follow up a little bit on what you had talked about with Mr. Day. And you indicated essentially all of your information came from interviewing him twice, correct? That's correct. While he was in the hospital. Um, and he had told you specifically it was his colon and spleen that were in there, correct? I believe so. I can refer to my notes, but that's it's what he said to me, yes, sir. Okay. Um, regarding the money order, cashier shit, with the rent money, did he not admit to you that he actually gave them to her to hold first? He did say that he gave her the money orders to hold. And then his problem was she wouldn't give them back, correct? That's correct. Okay. Um, <coughs> you said that when you talked to him the second time a few days later, <coughs> you noticed a bruise that had developed that you didn't notice the first time, correct? I noticed on his left eye that it was black underneath, and I noted that uh, the first time I saw him there was only slight swelling. There was no dark purplish bruising. So the bruise from this incident developed a few days later, correct? That's correct. Did you ever interview or take pictures of Ms. Mangum after that first day to see if any bruising had developed? I didn't speak to Ms. Mangum after that day. So there was no investigation to see if any future bruising had developed, after, just like it did with Mr. Day? At the point I was interviewing her, she did not wish to speak with me. I was not allowed to go back and re-interview her. Um, and Mr. Day says he doesn't remember hitting her, correct? He didn't say I don't remember. He said I don't think I hit her. Uh, he said that on a couple of occasions. And um, on one, he said, let me flip to that page. He said he didn't remember hitting her, but did say he did drag her by her hair. Okay. Um, he also admitted to you at one point that she was going to leave and he closed and locked the door, telling her no dates tonight, right? He never told me he locked the door. He specifically said he wasn't bogarting the door. And it was in the beginning of their argument that he did not want her to leave to go out on a date. Okay. Um, but later he indicated that when the altercation ended, or en ended up some point in the bedroom, that, again, they started arguing, and he held her down, correct? I never heard him say he held her down. He motioned that he grabbed her at one point, and as I showed before, he was laying in the bed and made this motion with his hands at his side. But he did grab her and say that it wasn't to keep her from leaving. It was to calm her down? Uh, he mentioned calming her down. I don't know if that was at the point that he was grabbing her. Do you have a page you're referring to, sir? Um, let me take a Did he say he locked the door and you said he, that he wasn't bogarting it? Does he not say he closed the door and told her she wasn't going anywhere? Uh, pages may not be numbered. Was this the first occasion I spoke with him or the um, second? This is the occasion, date and time, 4-6-2011. That's the second occasion. I have that. He said, I didn't want her to go out and do something stupid. I told her, you don't know those men. Um, then I asked him if, well, never mind, I can't speak to that. Um, let me get down with I asked him if he thought, uh, 
He said they started arguing about her leaving. I asked him if he kept her from leaving, and he said, I wasn't bogarting the door. I asked him where this took place, and he said the bedroom. Okay. And then, at some point, the argument resumed, continued, whatever, and she went into the bathroom, locked the door, to call an officer to come pick her up. At some point when they were arguing, he did say that she went into the bathroom and locked a door and he believed she was calling another male for a ride. Okay. So he believed she was calling someone so she could leave. He said he thought she was going in the bathroom to call another male for a ride. And his response to that was to kick the door down, go in there and grab her by the hair. Correct? Uh, at some point, he said he did kick the door in, and he did grab her by the hair. I don't know if those chain of events happened right after she locked herself in the door. But presumably, she didn't lock herself in, let herself out, put herself back in. Objection. Um, and. Can you look at, on the bottom of, like, again, I'm assuming yours are numbered the same as mine, or could be incorrect on it. The bottom of page 30? Yes, sir. This is, this is where I was asking when I said, Mr. Day, you asked if he was trying to physically keep her in the house? That's correct. I asked him at one point if he was trying to physically keep her in the house. He responded and said, no, he was trying to calm her down. But either way, that was my holding. Yes. Sustained. Um, in addition, you asked him how aggressive would he have rated himself on a scale of 1 to 10. What did he say? He said uh, 7 out of 10. I uh, was trying to get an idea of um, how violent everyone was acting. And uh, I asked uh, a scale of 10, how aggressive do you think you would be? And he said a 7. Um, and then I proceeded to ask him how aggressive he thought Miss Mangum would be. Just answer the question. Oh, I'm sorry. Um, does your report, or did he give you any indication of how long this whole sequence of events from them coming home, the fights, the holding her to calm her down, the kicking in the door, the dragging her by her hair, how long any of that lasted? I don't have any idea how long the events lasted. I do know that um, Officer Knight saw them in the parking lot, and that is time stamped. And I know there's a time stamp when Mr. Wilson called 911. Nothing further, Your Honor. Ms. Franks, uh, redirect. Yes, Your Honor. Lieutenant Bond, you were asked about uh, Mr. Day's aggressiveness, aggressiveness being 7 out of 10. Did you ask him about the defendant's aggressiveness? I did. And what did he tell you? He said 9 and a half. Out of the same scale? That's correct. No further questions, Your Honor. Mr. Meyer, anything further? No, Your Honor. All right. Thank you, ma'am. You may step down. Is there further evidence from the state? Your Honor, not at this time. The state would um, ask, as far as state's exhibits 1 <laughs> through 228, all should have been admitted except for 225. If that's not been done, we'd ask that they be admitted. And we also um, seek to publish some evidence. All right. Uh, so, members of the jury, uh, the state has asked to be given an opportunity to review exhibits, uh, some of which you may have already seen either on the screen or been passed out to you, and others which you have not yet had an opportunity to view uh, closely. We're going to take a few moments outside of your presence to have those exhibits laid out on a couple of tables, and then we'll have you back in the jury. Uh, box and we'll bring you out in small groups to walk by those tables and examine those exhibits more closely. Uh, so I'm going to ask you to step into the deliberation room for a few moments while you're there and I'll talk among yourselves about the case of formal expressing opinions. Leave a note in your chair.
Ms. Frank says to the motion or the admission of all of the exhibits, uh, my notes aren't complete enough for me to determine whether everything has been admitted that you say, but I'll give you an opportunity to confer with the clerk to assure yourself that whatever you intend to have admitted has in fact been admitted. Uh, with respect to this table, this is just tangible items, physical exhibits, is that correct? Yes, sir. And then what other items do you wish to have published? Um, I would ask that photographs, because the uh, elbow was not exactly clear, just that nothing else be laid on the table if, if they want to look at them or not look at them. All right. I think what we ought to do with photographs is just simply hand the packet of photographs to the jury and let them pass them among, among themselves while other groups are, uh, we'll bring them out perhaps in a group of four at a time and we'll start the photographs down the back row. And, uh, that may take a bit longer, but rather than having a stack of photographs on the table, I'm not sure that's very effective. All right, Mr. Meyer, anything you wish to be heard on with respect to all of this? No, that's all fine. You are fine. Okay, then in that case, let's move um, this table with physical exhibits, uh, something placed close to the jury box. Let's get back on the record briefly. Uh, I have exhibit 17 and 18 as having been admitted in close notes. I'll reflect that. So those are buccal swabs. Uh, I believe that they were. Yes, sir. I had asked that they be admitted at the time of the other evidence. I believe the court report has them admitted, but to be safe, the state would be asked to admit items 17 and 18 into evidence. All right. Any objection? Not have them being admitted. Uh, so we'll have those as being admitted. All right, and so Ms. Branch, you've provided the stack of photographs that you want to pass around to the jurors. All right. Yes, sir. Very good. Well, let's go ahead and uh, bring the jurors back in. Uh, I'll ask, I know our television cameras certainly understands the rules, but while the jurors are milling about down here in the, in the uh, courtroom, I'll ask the jurors that the uh, camera's pointed in the opposite direction. All right, very good. Let's bring the jurors back in.
ladies and gentlemen. So, uh, Bailiff will start. Uh, there's a large stack of photographs that it's going to pass around and take as much time as you need to flip through the stack of photographs uh, and then pass it on to the next juror. Uh, then, in the meanwhile, we're going to get uh, groups of three or four of you to uh, come down and uh, take as much time as you want to to examine the physical exhibits there and also uh, several charts and diagrams or less exhibits are also laid out. Uh, please, uh, as you're examining these, I'll remind you, please uh, examine them individually, carefully, and without comment. So, better if you want to get a group, maybe the first four here at the end of the uh, photographs, just someone on the back right there. You're welcome to take your notepads with you, whatever you're up to. Uh, seven, eight, nine, ten, first four here, going down